Welcome to the FVTV feature game. I'm Darren Lutton. It's round three of the FFA Cup and we're at the bridge for the clash between Capital League 2, The Gap, up against Capital League 1, Annalee. This should be an exciting game tonight, looking for a lot of goals. Let's get straight to the action. Calling the game is Rafe Griffin. Thanks very much, Darren. The Gap versus Annalee here in qualifying round three. The two captains getting together for the coin toss as we take a look at the team lineups for tonight. Last year we saw the gap on FBTV involved in an epic struggle against Park Ridge. Jim Bellis with the referee's whistle for this one, assisted by Bradley Burton and Jeffrey Lewis. And it's Annalee in their all blue strip that get us underway. Long range shot from the opening and Andrew McDonald at force, full stretch, then forced to tip the way the ball from his goal line and Annalee perhaps unlucky not to have an opening goal here inside the first 10 seconds. Played square there and Annalee looked to break on the counter now. Ball played through for McGarry. The gap bench looking for an offside call. McGarry sends his shot just wide of the upright. Let's take a look at that. Ball played through and the Annalee player called offside. Took a deflection off the gap player. And obviously the assistant thought that was enough to play that Annalee player onside. Oh, shot here from McLennan. Forces a save out of Luke Sutherland who played for the gap last year up against his former club tonight. Another corner here to the gap. Edge of the box here for Cleary. Headed on there by Andrews and then the secondary header over the crossbar. End-to-end -end stuff here. Heavy challenge coming in. Referee Bellos waves play on. Let's take a look at that. Oh, flying challenge in there on Nick Clarson. Here come Annalee once more through McGarry. McGarry trying to twist his way. Crucial clearance there from O'Neill. And the opening goal comes for Annalee. As we lead up into the half-time break, McGarry strong on the ball. Rebound falls for Marco Tola. And from just inside the box, slams away his shot past Andrew McDonald. Arrow, ball into the six-yard box. Moving into second half action and the gap looking to pull back that one goal deficit. Flavin, only players remain down and Flavin elects to play it across the sideline. Let's take a look at this challenge. Oh, hefty one. I think might have caught the Annalee player there somewhere awkward, did Cormac Malloy. Getting back to his haunches slowly here is Emerson Valenti. Jim Bellos asks him to leave the field. Throw in from Malloy into the box. Trying to play around with it there is Nilsson. Nilsson to the byline. Cuts it back. Still not out of danger here are uh, Annerley. Cleary now. Plays his ball in. Scramble in the six yard box and James Nilsson. Is Johnny on the spot? And the gap have brought it back on level terms. The Annerley defenders focusing on the other gap players, leaving James Nilsson unmarked. And on the Packfire Australia GoPro replay, 
We can see James Nilsson tucking it in to the back of the net. Goal kick comes from McDonald on that occasion. And referee Bellos waves away the protests and Annalee continue on their way. Although we're going to see the ball across the sideline. Let's have another look at that and see if we can spot what's happened. Perhaps, oh yeah, just an awkward landing on that left ankle. Certainly a high attrition rate so far in this keenly fought match as we get to the hour mark. How squares it on. And O'Hanlon tries to get something on it. Played forward by O'Hanlon. On for How. And now wider still for Malloy. Malloy gets his ball away. Long range shot. Takes a deflection. And the gap will have that one ruled out. Take a look at it. And the gap player was offside just at the time that the ball was played by one of his teammates. And Nilsson has his goal disallowed. And the gap still forced to remain at one all. How? Midway through the second half. Onto the penalty spot. I don't think Sutherland knew a lot about that. Tempting to build out from the back here. Oh, another harsh challenge in there this time from McLennan. And he's going to see yellow. McLennan. Oh, yeah, he's copped the right foot there, I think, of Cleary. The right leg, I apologise. That allows the free kick here to the gap. Drifted into the box. McDonald goes short. Cleary. Earns the ball back again. Cleary. Good save there from Sutherland. Oh, and Malloy denied by the woodwork. Cormac Malloy picks it up. Almost looked like he got the perfect angle on it. Corner here to Annalee at the other end. Can they find a winner? Takes a deflection there, does Valenti shot. Malloy's been tireless for the gap tonight. Can he find a late winner here for his side? Cleary. You can hear the gap crowd in the background. And uh, O'Brien ruled to have touched the ball twice there, I think. Don't know whether Annerley were trying to play it cute. And that's the end of 90 minutes. And we're going to go to extra time. The Gap and Annerley locked at one all. And an extra 30 minutes. Determine a winner here. McLennan. On for McGarry. Squared to the edge of the box for O'Brien. And another corner here to Annerley. Corcoran. Will slip there by the defender. McLennan it was. Plays it back for his keeper, Sutherland. Second period of extra time. Gap with a corner. Onto the penalty box. And headed on there from Andrews, it looked like. And he wasn't too far away. Constant pressure here for the gap. Players starting to tie up. Malloy on for Cleary. Now Malloy again. Straight to the keeper. Keep 
Over Malloy there. For Mengotti. And Lee with the chance. Ball somehow manages to go over the crossbar. The turn on goal from Clark. Cannons off McDonald. Time running out for both sides to avoid the dreaded penalties. Flavin. Onto the back post. And it's in the back of the net. Will that be the winner for the gap with six minutes remaining? Flavin unmarked is Kevin Howe. Corner of the six yard box. And the gap take a 2-1 lead. And referee Jim Bellos blows the full time whistle. The gap will be through to round four of Westfield FFA Cup qualifying. Yeah, well, they, these sort of games certainly test us and our depth more than anything else. I mean, we, we certainly have been working on fitness on the off-season, so we knew if it went the distance, we had enough. But uh, a few niggling inju injuries here and there, and, and the gap certainly took it to us. And um, we were unlucky in the day, but, you know, heads up, uh, hats off to Jerry. Every t I've known him for about five or six years now, and every time we play him or, or anything to do with football, I know he's ready to come out at us, and that's exactly what he's done tonight. Not so much on the uh, performance as a whole, but more so on the fact that we went off our, our game plan. The game plan was set in stone early on, and within the first five minutes it went out the window and we had to regroup. And I, it wasn't until about the 90th minute when we decided to start playing football. Um, but again, credit to the gap. They, they played a different style tonight and forced us to play that way. We're trying to turn around a disappointing season from last year and I've taken over this year and we certainly have aspirations of top four. I know that we're certainly being rated as an underdog this year but getting a point off Pine Rivers at Pine Rivers uh, last week proves that we can certainly meet it with the best but look, long way to go. Uh, there's a few little combinations we've got to work with and, and the goals don't just stop there. It goes through to the reserve grade too to make sure that we've got a strength for, for anything future so it's not just get promoted and go straight back down again. So we've really got to work on our depth. Well, Jerry, that turned into a classic game. Absolutely. I think that's probably the game of the season, to be honest with you. It was from one end to the other. It was fantastic. And uh, credit to Anley. Um, they come at us and they tried everything. And, uh, you know, I was so proud of my boys too to, to come through that. I mean, that's only our third competitive game this year. So it was. And uh, at the end, it could have went anyway, to be honest. Yeah. Well, I mean, obviously, we're, you know, we're in this cup, you know, we, we're obviously we're trying our best to get to as many rounds as we possibly can and we'll take one round at a time. But uh, I think for me, it's more about the, uh, the system in which we're trying to play this year for this football club. And uh, that's going to do our conference the world of good coming into the season proper. Yeah. Well, obviously, I mean, uh, you know, this club has been so close in the last few years. Um, I think it's time that they really need to knock on the door the first division and I think the way they're playing at the moment I think they'll be very close in doing it this year that's uh, the ambition of mine is to, to get them out of this league uh, and into the first division <laughs>